Today we'll make the digital version of a word of the day calendar. Remember those? Instead of giving the gift that says, I put no thought into what to get you, you can suffer by making one instead. This digital version is built with an ESP8266 and a few Max 7200 LED matrix modules. These quad modules are pretty common on eBay. They are the hardware variant FC16 when using the Parola and MD Max 7200 libraries. I'm using these quad modules because it's less work to build a longer display than by using singular modules to build one. You'll see a piece of white paper in some of these shots. That's just to help the camera pick up the red LEDs. Without the diffusion layer, my camera has trouble showing the LED contrast. The marquee I built here is 10 total 8x8 matrices, or two and a half sets of these quad modules. The actual size of the module is up to you. I would recommend at least eight of these 8x8 modules for this usage case. Since we are reading words and more importantly full sentences to understand context, seeing more of the sentence helps our brain process information. I tried just four and then six modules when prototyping this. It's difficult to process what I'm reading when you have a narrow window of words. I added a potentiometer to make adjustments to the scroll speed. Speed choice will vary on the end user. And that's it for hardware. Now for the software. Brian Locke did a great video tutorial on beginner data scraping with the ESP8266. I suggest you check his content out as this project was built on his groundwork example file. In summary, we are scraping public facing data only. This data is just character text from a web page. Unlike more streamlined web scraping projects that use an API like this weather forecaster, this will be a more brute force approach, kind of like running public transportation. It's not elegant, but this method is going to be serviceable. The program points to the URL we want to scrape from. From here, we need to identify what data we want. Unlike more robust scrapers like in Python, we don't have the luxury of identifying HTML tags to target to. The ESP library I'm using can only search using strings. We can scan the HTML for the string we want and using this point to start scraping the HTML text. We scrape this text and dump it into a character buffer. Since we're now streaming data into building a character buffer, we need to eventually stop filling this buffer. We stop scraping until we find a specific character we want to stop at. This is tricky because some web pages that are busy with heavy formatting, it's hard to find a unique character that will always give the stopping point we need. Let's look at this in practice. Here's the source HTML for this web page. In this example, some portions are pretty easy, like grabbing the single word of the day. The word typically starts at the h1 tag, and we can use the string h1 to start the scrape. Stopping is easy, since the HTML format closes this word with an immediate tag, so stopping at the greater than character will scrape all the content we need. If Merriam-Webster decides to change their page, this will break our code. And that's one of the downfalls of this scraping method. The trickier parts are the broader scrapes like word definitions. The word definition starts at the h2 tag. Again, simple to find the starting point. However, words with multiple definitions have lots of HTML formatting that bury the text we want. In this example, it's best to scrape until the next unique section of the web page to ensure we get everything we want. That would be where this span tag of scroll depth starts. Again, we cannot call out the tag to stop our scrape. Our tools aren't that sophisticated. We have to pick a special character to stop at, or two characters in series using the bitwise and, or I think that's how that works. Scraping in this method captures any instance of multiple definitions, but it also captures a lot of HTML formatting text, most of which we have to remove. Let's turn that into a string, and by doing a bunch of string.remove operations, we'll get rid of the superfluous text. This is a bit sloppy as we have to bend to the whim of the web page. Again, if the page ever changes formatting or layout, this code breaks. I've still got some things to work on, like when a word is defined by a single hyperlinked word. I can remove the base hyperlinked text, but now the word appears twice. One as it was defined and another left over from HTML scraping the URL. Help me in the comments with this operation to remove only one instance of that same word. But that's really it. I repeat the scraping and text cleanup tasks for each of the sections needed, which are syllable pronunciation, definition, and usage. Opening up the serial monitor shows my debug process. 
we can see the raw data after it's being scraped, and then the cleanup after I do all these string.remove operations. Again, it's not elegant, but it's serviceable when you don't have an API or you don't want to use an API. When all the strings are cleaned up, I concatenate them and push them to the marquee using a scroll function from the MD Max 7200 library. There are a lot of applications for web scraping. Since we sidestep an API, this method opens a lot of doors and it's very versatile, kind of like a spork. Other uses are an atomic clock from time.gov, maybe a weather station or a whatever counter for your social media of choice and so on. There are some things to keep in mind, and that's the frequency of your request to the web page. Anything more than once per minute will look suspicious on the server side, so avoid pinging your source too frequently. All data is subject to copyright, so be mindful of what you scrape and how you use it. I've done web scraping before with Python. The request library and beautiful soup tools are more robust for scraping, but the fundamentals are the same. I wrote a program that scans a video game barcode, builds a URL to search the game from pricecharting.com, and returns the game title, genre, and current price into a CSV file. This turned out to be a great tool to inventory video game collections in a matter of minutes versus a manual entry method. I'll link that video below. Many thanks to Brian Locke for posting great tutorials. Check out his content for a more baseline explanation of how ESP web scraping works. Thanks for watching, everyone.